Hello and welcome to your chair yoga class focused on posture. So for today's class, a little different. <laughs> I'm going to explore um, a little bit more variety of props in our chair yoga. So obviously a chair, hopefully without arms on it, but you do not have to have one of these without the backs. Um, I actually do recommend a chair with a comfortable back in case you want to lean back on it during class. Now, the rest of the props are optional. Don't worry if you don't have props. Um, if you have just one, get a yoga strap, or you can use a scarf, a belt from a robe, for example, will work. It's just an arm extender to grab the foot more easily for a hamstring and also a quad stretch today. So have that on hand. Um, the rest are completely optional. We're gonna need one block or potentially need, right? <laughs> it's up to you, one block. And also I have some knee padding. So unlike my other yoga classes for chair, I'm actually going to give you the option to do two of the shapes in a kneeling position on the floor. Now I know there's a lot of days where my knees don't want to do these. Um, and I will show you a variation seated. Now, if you do want to actually kneel on the floor, take as much padding as possible for your knees. So, for example, I'm going to take two blankets and I'm going to make them the width of my body, at least the width of my knees. And I'm just going to stack them on top of each other. So it's it's real nice support and cushion. Always uh, <laughs> err on the side of caution. <laughs> is, that, is that the saying? And pad your knees more than you think you need. Um, they'll thank you the day after your yoga class. <laughs> so gather what you have. Again, if you ever have questions on props, please send me an email at carolbaileyyoga at gmail.com. And let's get started. Okay, so welcome to your chair yoga class based on posture improvement. So I'm speaking from my life, but if you can relate, when I watch TV in, my, in the evenings, my posture is not like this. <laughs> my posture is kind of slouchy in the couch or I'll lean, especially if my puppy's involved. And it's not that that is wrong that you should just sit on the floor in a meditation cushion all day. It's that if we habitually do it for long periods of time without taking breaks to stretch or release, um, the body can get, I don't wanna say stuck, but basically we get um, habits in our body that form. So we'll get aches and pains and I'm like, oh, I didn't do anything all day. Why does my low back hurt? because I was sitting too long um, with poor posture. You could also think about this even when we're just standing in the kitchen um, preparing a meal. We might not be standing in proper form. Always take breaks and stretch. Do a little downward facing dog, for example, on the counter. Um, we'll do that using the back of the chair today. So let's get started just by centering ourselves a bit, arriving into our space. So I actually want to find this really neutral alignment with the spine here. So I'm going to kind of shift around, find the sit bones. So if you're ever wondering if you're sitting up tall or not, um, it starts from where the pelvis is positioned. So even take the feet out a little wider and away from you. And I want you to almost imagine that you're tipping the pelvis a little bit, just slightly forward. So we're not going into you know, our big cow pose right now, but just slight anterior pelvic tilts. So you, if you can feel your sit bones, you're almost sitting on the front edge of your sit bones is another way of thinking about it. Release your arms wherever they feel comfortable. If you would like to do a little chin mudra with me, um, I like to do this for concentration, so taking the index finger and the thumbs together, turn the palms up or down in the lap. 
Just allow yourself to arise and arrive. So what does it mean to have an open heart? What does it mean to you? So working on posture is really stretching um, the front of the body as we engage the back. So think about broadening across the chest, um, even stretching, we'll get into the quads today. So energetically, beyond the physical, what does an open heart mean in your life? There's no right or wrong answer. Some examples would be taking care of others. Maybe making more time for yourself during the day. And this yoga practice right now, you setting time aside in your day, actually clicking play on this video, <laughs> that is having an open heart for yourself. But the beautiful thing about yoga is that it evolves into something bigger than just us. If you ever notice you're maybe in a better mood after yoga class, that translates to people that are maybe in your household or um, in your neighborhood. Just notice, what does that mean to you and how does it feel? And take a couple more breaths to release the mudra and slowly open the eyes. And let's take a couple shoulder rolls, nice and slow. No, I apologize, I forgot to say to keep your strap nearby um, or your straps substitute nearby for the beginning of this class. So if that's far away, it always is, right? It's always on the other side of the room. <laughs> so please bring it nearby. All right, and if you need to kind of shake out the legs a little bit. Let's do some shoulder blade releasing. So our shoulder blades to slide and glide on our back. All right now just reach your arms up as much as they'll go. So I often kind of notice so I could cue um, and for instance my one arm doesn't go up as far as the other one. So we're not symmetrical beings. So I'm not saying to be even left and right. I'm just saying to go as far as you can with your body today. And then I'm going to make fists just to get a little bit of action in the fingers and the palms this morning. I'm going to retract my shoulder blades, so squeeze shoulder blades together, and pull the elbows down again as far as your elbows are gonna go. So instead of me being a mirror for you, and you have to, and just let that go for a moment, purposely like reflect my every single move. Um, I'm just an example. So reaching arms overhead. So elevation and then retraction and depression of the shoulders. So squeeze shoulder blades together and pull them down. Already you feel this stretch across the upper chest. And then release. Let's do this two more times without me talking. And then there's a couple shoulder rolls there. And if you're feeling a little bit of tension, because we did kind of work the shoulders right now. I like to do this thing where I hunch up the shoulders, squeeze, 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 <laughs> and then release. So 
So do this a couple more times. Hunch and squeeze, and then release. You're actually teaching your body to release by going more into the tension. So it's kind of a neat little way and just bounce it out. All right, let's do some side bends. So I'm just gonna kind of dangle my arm, taking my other hand to support my head. So if this feels um, not comfortable for your shoulder today, you could just have your hand on your hip. We're just side bending to the right here. I'm mirroring you. Well, <laughs> I already said I'm not your mirror, I know, but I'm just doing my left side, your right. That's what I mean by that. Uh, yoga teachers are tricky with their words. <laughs> okay, go into your left side now, side bend. Upper arm again is optional. And everything really is optional. So if I could wish one thing for my students, the open heart theme would be for you to honor where you are and not feel, I don't know, lack of a better word, not feel bad if you can't do something. That's, that's the worst feeling in yoga. Let's do it one more time each side. To feel bad for not doing a pose or shape, that's, that's horrible. So I think that would be the one thing I could wish. Uh, the list is long, but <laughs> it's on the top for my students. If I show you something that's just not working for you today, don't feel bad about it. It's fine. You're here, you're moving, it's great. All right, let's take some angel wings. So flutter your fingertips on top of your shoulders. Now we're going to work on that protraction shoulder blades away from each other, and then retraction again. So I'm gonna pull my elbows forward. I'm gonna feel my shoulder blades pull away from each other. So I'm kind of rounding my upper back. So notice this is kind of a mini cat cow here. We'll eventually make it into a larger cat cow. So I'm just focusing on the upper back moving, really the shoulder blades. So shoulder blades squeezing together here as elbows go back and then forward again. So I love this, especially in the mornings. So maybe when you're waiting for your coffee to brew, for example, do some angel wing shoulder work. It can actually feel real nice, especially if you're a side sleeper. I feel like as a side sleeper, my shoulders get a little wonky from the night. And finish the round that you're on. And then release that again anytime. Do some shoulder rolls and release that. So now hands on hips. Why don't you sit a little bit further forward on your chair um, so we don't bump into the back of the seat. Now starting from the pelvis, so the root of the spine. I'm going to tilt the pelvis even more forward than the start of class when we're opening, centering. I'm going to take this into my cow pose. Taking my elbows back behind me, hands on the hips, squeezing shoulder blades together. And then now from the pelvis, round the pelvis back. So posterior pelvic tilt, arching the spine. Elbows kind of go forward, not really, it's just the way the hands are. And just a few more times, again, moving from the pelvis, tipping it forward into our cow pose. So we're gonna do half camel today, and this is really um, the top part, <laughs> pelvis up of half camel. So camel pose is ustrasana in Sanskrit. And they're all mainly named after animals and bugs. <laughs> what they had around, you know, and warrior stuff. All right, just finish the round that you're on, or think about it as finish the round that you're on and do one more. Excellent, and just shake it out. Grab your strap or strap substitute. I should just call it a band. And I have, I think it's an eight foot strap so I just fold it in half so it's not so cumbersome 
and I'm holding it what I would consider slightly um, wider than my shoulders. So if my legs are about hip distance, my fists come to around the outside of my thighs. Now they could be wider, um, but I'm just going to start there for now. So we're going to take it up and overhead, feel the stretch there, and then squeeze so the band comes behind your head, and then slight twist. So I'm twisting to your right, and a little extra here, I want you to press down more with your left foot. So you're not going to see movement from me, it's very subtle. But basically as you're twisting right, press down more with your left foot into the ground. And then come back to center and release it. We're going to do the same the other side and then repeat it. So reach up, cactus bend, stretch, and I'm really keeping that tautness in the strap. My left elbow leads the charge as I twist around the low rib cage. And then I'm pressing down a little bit more with my right foot into the earth. So think of it as the direction that you're twisting. Press down more with the opposite side foot. Just notice how that tiny little change impacts you. And then release. Let's give our hands a break there. We're going to do this a little bit faster, going right and then left, um, just right away without releasing the strap. So taking the strap behind the head, taking it into your cactus arm twist, pressing down with the opposite foot, back to center, twist, pressing down with the opposite foot, back to center, reach up and down. Releasing shoulders, releasing hands. And let's do this one more time. Take your time. Tight strap. Excellent. All right, we are going to hold the twist but add a hamstring stretch. So remember the leg that we were pressing down with the foot? Now we're going to press down with the heel. So I'm going to scooch back so you can see my foot a little bit better. I know I'm slightly off camera here. I need a bigger room. <laughs> so I'm taking my lay, uh, arm extender, uh, aka the strap, around the foot. I'm just holding it. So you can create a loop in your strap if that's easier um, for you to hold it. I'm just trying to hold it with one hand, both sides. I'm going to keep that leg as straight as possible. I'm trying to engage the top of the thigh, the quad, so get the hamstring stretch. And then twisting. And you could use the back of the chair. I love the back of the chair um, with this to hold. So I'm pressing down and out with my left heel as I twist to the right. And as you're here, you could play around with the head and neck. Going to turn and look out over the back shoulder for a couple breaths. And then just move the chin to look over the front shoulder for a couple breaths. If that feels good, you can repeat it. Excellent. See, I don't even have to be in the room with you to know you're doing a good job. That's how good I am. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's how funny it is. All right, so opposite leg, opposite foot. And don't worry about where the strap is on the foot. I'm just lifting this so you can see. I have it in the, in the middle, the transverse arch. Not a big deal, wherever it feels comfortable. Breathe in and exhale, twist. That's just my metal strap banging on the floor there, if you heard that. Pressing down and out with the heel. Engage the top of the thighs, so we're engaging the quad to release the hamstring. So the muscles like bicep, tricep, for example, they work in opposition with each other. So if we're stretching one, we're engaging the other. And then just turn your head, look out back shoulder. And then if it feels comfortable, gaze out front and repeat.
All right. And release that, release the strap. We're not gonna need that until um, we come to standing, so just have it near the top of your mat that works. And this twist actually just um, discovered this naturally. My low back was hurting and I was sitting on the couch. And I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna see what feels good. And this came about. So have your uh, knees a little wider, like a goddess shape. You're gonna still do a spinal twist. So I'm gonna twist to your right. And then I'm gonna reach my arm down the inside of my left leg. So notice we're in a twist, but also a deep side bend. So if we're doing this on the floor, this would be head of the knee pose or Janusasana. Always a fun Sanskrit word to say. And just notice as you're here, you might just feel a little bit heavier, like you wanna side bend even more, and that's fine. Now, if your head feels too heavy, you could always bend the elbow onto the thigh and hold the head here. You never want to create neck tension trying to <laughs> get that uh, big QL muscle in our low back. All right, and then slowly come up so you're back into the twist and then unwind. Kind of feels good. You could even just pause for a moment, see if you feel difference left to right. And then let's take it on the other side and then we'll take a pause and um, optional come to standing. I'll show you uh, a kneeling version as well. So slide down here. And where everybody stops, just stop there. Again, you could always bend the elbow, hold the head, or if your head feels comfortable, then just let it kind of go for a ride with you. And slowly come out and back to neutral. So I will position my um, chair to the top of the mat with the seat facing me so I have the full real estate of the mat um, ahead of the seat. But I'm just showing you if you're not kneeling today what we're gonna do. So it's going to be a quad release um, called this lizard pose or dragon and yin. So we've done this before together where you have your one leg supported, thighs on the seat. Uh, obviously pelvis, half the pelvis is on the seat. And then the other thigh is hanging off the front of the seat. You're either gonna tuck the toes under or untuck and take the leg far back as you can because the more that this thigh is on a diagonal, the more of a front of the thigh quad stretch we're gonna get. So that's your option, option number one. And then you just do the other side, flip around. Um, if you want to do dragon with me, you're more than, oops, welcome to do so. <laughs> I really hope it's not too annoying when I bang into my closet door. Hopefully I did kind of funny. All right, so padding for knees. And the chair might be too close. We'll see how it goes. So your back knee is going to be on the pad. And then your front leg is going to step to the side of the chair. So you have the full chair seat to support your forearms. That back toes can be tucked or untucked, whatever feels good to you. Um, if you can tuck them under, at least for a couple breaths, it's actually a nice stretch for the toes, plantar fascia. Um, and then you could also untuck. So my foot, is facing, my front foot is facing slightly on a diagonal, just slightly. And I'm trying to sink my hips forward and down. So I have my full, full forearms on the chair seat um, to feel supported there. So again, if this isn't working for you, then go to that side sit, quad release, 
seated in a chair. There's nothing wrong with that. We're just going to try to linger here. Just breathe into it. It's more of a yin pose when we stay in the pose for a little longer. Just trying to get into a deep muscle stretch. more breaths here. And then slowly come out of this. So after a long hold, we want to slowly come out. Now if you're seated on a chair, just pause in a neutral seat. Um, if you're kneeling like I am, I'm just going to kind of kneel on my Heels for a minute and just literally just take a pause and we'll do the other side. Okay, so pick which version of this you would like to do. Now if you're doing the kneeling version, you just have to scoot your chair over a little bit. So you can get your opposite foot forward, back knee back. Again, if you can, try to tuck the toes under just slightly. And lean forward. We're holding this for about 45 seconds, almost a minute. And I do like these longer holes because initially you go into it, you're like, oh, okay, I can go this far. <laughs> And then your body kind of, okay, fine. <laughs> here, I guess you're lingering here for a minute. And your body just releases, opens up to you. So I like to think of our yoga practice as the body opens up to you. So that open heart, um, you could often think about it as like a, a lotus flower, just opening up. Just a couple more breaths here. And slowly come out. Now there's a tendency to want to pop out of that. <laughs> All right, we're going to come up to standing. Do so in a supported way. Take your time. And then turning the chair, we're going to use the back of the chair facing you. And we're going to take the, if you use the, uh, kneeling support just take it out of the way and find your strap if you have it take that to there all right so i told you before that um, when i cook in the kitchen i take a downward facing dog on the counter so we're just going to use this as our countertop I actually really like the counter better it's a little higher um, but you can always use the back of the chair so start to walk your feet back. And then it's always a question of how far should the feet go? You know, there's always this hips over heels rule or something. There's no rule. It's just as far as your feet are going to go back today. So I'm kind of making an L shape, but that's in my body. What does your body do today? Trying to press down with the palms slightly so we get a little shoulder release. And just breathe into it. Now come up just slightly to step the left leg forward, a really big step. The right toes, the back foot slightly angles out. So we're going into pyramid. 
So instead of warrior one, where the back foot's really at that 45 pyramid, it's just like a scissor step where both toes are really pointing forward. But for me, I have to angle my back toes a little bit, so slightly out. And I'm trying to engage the quads here. You could stay here or you could lower down. Depending on the decoration on the back of your chair, this might not be comfortable. You could always pad it with a blanket. And I'm just taking a look at my feet, making sure that the entire sole of the foot is glued to the mat. It's a really great stretch for the ankles. And you can obviously feel it in the hamstrings. <laughs> obviously. Now, if you want a little extra, you could just lift the front toes off the mat. So notice how that feels. And if you want a little bit more, try to peel off the sole of the foot of the front leg. I know, it's just the heel is on the mat. Very intense hamstring release. And lower the foot down. Bending into both knees, coming up to mountain pose just for a moment. That could be really intense. Let's just take a moment to <laughs> chill and breathe, right? <laughs> that should be a, the title of my next uh, class. Let me know if you want a chill and breathe class or any other ones. I, I, take, I take requests. Trust me, I love it. All right, let's take a moment here. And then instead of stepping forward, we're gonna step back. So the opposite foot's in front. So my right foot now is in front. Doesn't matter how we get into it, so don't worry. We're not uneven. You could lean forward if you wish. One side might be a little bit more cooperative. <laughs> Side's my, my least cooperative side, but that's okay. I love both sides of the of the body. All right, soles of the feet on the mat. I always like to notice if I'm gripping somewhere. So I'm like <laughs> white knuckling it here with my fist. Just if you feel like you're gripping your hands, you know, it's gonna be pretty intense. Just try to release, flutter the fingers. Engage the quad slightly. And then if you wish, could try it on this side, lift just the toes off the mat on the front foot. Hopefully you could see that. And then maybe just the front heel is down on the floor. Very intense. Now it's okay. I don't want you to worry if you feel in the back of the knee. Um, that's also the hamstring. The hamstring attaches where we would think of our calf. Um, starting so at the bottom of the back of the knee. But everything's always connected, right? All the fascia lines, everything's connected. All right, release the foot, bend both knees. I'm kind of going into this little lunge and step the back foot in. All right, grab your strap. And again, I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm even going to fold it in half twice here because I don't need the full length. And take it behind you. I'm going to turn completely around so you can see this. My palms are facing you. They're facing out. I'm just going to hold on to the metal <laughs> so it doesn't dingling over here. And I'm putting tension on the strap. And I'm reaching it down and away from my body. And maybe a little bit up and away. So don't worry about how far away the strap is getting from your backside. Um, just making sure that you feel the release of shoulder blades together and expansion on the upper chest. Now, we took a really intense hamstring stretch there. So if you want to, just once in a while, kind of bend the knees and release. Not necessarily trying to bounce, but just sometimes that feels nice after a Long stretch there, releasing the legs. Okay, good. 
Maybe some shoulder stretches or the hunch. Ooh, and release. <laughs> I love that so much. Hunch. Arr. Next time someone aggravates you, just be like, hold on. I need to do some yoga and go Arr, and then release it. <laughs> I guarantee you the tension will diminish. <laughs> All right, we will need the strap later, but I'm just gonna take it off to the side because we don't need it right now. And let's take the seat. So if you have enough room, uh, AKA you don't have this wall behind you, I want you to leave enough space so you can put your front foot right in front of the seat um, near the, the middle of the seat, okay? So we're not gonna use it yet, but just if you need to eyeball it, that would be the location. All right, but first we're gonna do a little dynamic balancing. So we're not rocks, I say that a lot. I, I love that saying, so if you need to hold on to something, um, that's fine, we're meant to move. So balancing is this lovely term that we use, but our body's always moving, so don't think of a balance as a static exercise. So stepping onto one leg, just lifting the knees straight up, however far it's gonna go today, and then arms up. I'm kind of doing a wide V-shape. And then release down. Shift the weight, opposite knee up, arms overhead, and then release. So I learned this one in a workshop. It seems like such a <laughs> simple little thing. Uh, Mary Richards is a fantastic teacher. And she said that if you are seated for, for a long time period of time, and you are like, oh boy, I really need a break. This is great because it gets strengthening the hip flexors. And it also gets a little bit of a lift in the chest, the arms overhead. So it's nice to do after those long seated, maybe work from home or just working on the computer. Even as a yoga teacher, I tend to work on the computer a lot. <laughs> I don't just record and, uh, and upload the video. There's a lot of little edits that I do and everything, so it takes a while. All right, find a spot where you could release there. We're going to try holding it. Again, knowing that you're going to move around this fine, but let's just swing and release. My knees are bent. Just release out of that. Now you could hold on to the chair or a wall or hands on hips. Shift your weight and just one knee up. That's all I'm doing. And then releasing down. Shifting weight. One knee up. and then releasing down. Now just a subtle thing if, if you want. So I have my hands on the top of my pelvis. And right now when I'm standing, my pelvis I would say is neutral or level. Now can you maintain that as you lift your leg? Now what I mean by that, and my hands will be kind of markers for you, I'm not lifting my leg by making my pelvis go on an angle, on a diagonal, right? So can you lift the leg just by sheer strength of your hip flexors? Even thinking about taking the lifted legs, side of the pelvis and pushing it down slightly. So I know that you've probably been practicing with me for a little bit if you made it to this video. I don't think you would click on this first. <laughs> so if you have been practicing with me for a little bit, I like to throw in just a little bit extra for you. So the longer you practice yoga, the more subtle it becomes. Think about that one. The more little things you could focus on and try and do. So I'm just going back and forth, trying to hold my knee up just for two breath cycles about Make sure you feel even. 
And then take your time. We're just going to meet in Tadasana Mountain Pose. You can do a little swing and release if you wish. <laughs> but just kind of close your eyes. Take a pause. Just notice. And notice the area around your heart center. So our energetic heart in yoga is located where our physical heart is located, oddly enough. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way, but in this case it does. So notice if you feel a little bit more open there, or if it's easier to stand with a neutral spine and shoulders back and down. So when you're ready, open the eyes. Now let's position wherever your chair is, that's fine. So if you wanna do your right foot in front of it and mirror me, that's cool. Taking the other foot back, we're gonna start in warrior two. So initially we're not really using the chair, I get that. You can put your hands on your hips. If you feel like it, you could take your hands out. Palms can be anywhere that feel good, even if you wanna have this little fun rotating shoulders internally and externally. It's like you're wringing out a rag. And your shoulders feel fatigued. Hands on hips. Just bending into the front knee. Down, let's straighten the front leg. We're going to go in and out of triangle pose. So first, just open up the arms. I'm going to reach my right arm. It's like pointing my finger in the direction that I'm reaching. So I'm hinging into that front hip crease. Not as easy as it looks. And then coming back and lowering the arms. That's all we're doing right now. Reaching, hinging. You could even instead put the webbing between the thumb and the first finger on the top of the thigh to kind of help it out. Coming back and releasing the arms. Do this two more times. All right. Now let's try to hold triangle. Get into that front hip crease. Take fingertips, fist, whatever you need to into the chair seat. Sometimes that chair seat is still a little low. Add the block on top of the chair seat. So I'll just show you that for a moment. Or a folded blanket and put your hand there. And then what we're gonna do is again, in pyramid, we do the same thing. Make sure the soles of the feet are on the floor and then open up your heart towards the ceiling. So I'm keeping my chin in line with my sternum. So I'm keeping my head and neck neutral but I'm pulling that shoulder. Think about that shoulder pulling back, so opening up the heart. I wore this big mandala <laughs> shirt. <laughs> so that's my, that's my, uh, my uh, target, right? Sometimes I can't think of words. Bullseye, that's it. And slowly release out of that, bend the front knee and then come up to standing. We're gonna take a goddess pose in between. So sinking down and then squeezing up just for a little bit of release for the legs, strengthening for the legs as well. Toes turned out, knees tracking over toes. It's going out and in, up and down. All right, now let's take the chair on the other side if you like the block. For your hand, take that with you. All right. Again, position the seat as far off the mat as you can. Just making sure like the front legs are still on the sticky mat. Um, so you have some stability there. And let's take the front foot, dissecting with the middle, the front of the chair. Ooh, stepping that leg back. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it doesn't. That back foot angled in. All right, let's take our warrior two, and again, arms out or hands on hips. Could reach. If you want something a little different, 
you just reach your arms back in a big V shape, squeezing shoulder blades together and then releasing, going back and forth with that. Excellent. All right, let's straighten the front leg. Just open up the arms and hinge into that front hip crease. Coming back up and lower arms. That's all we're doing here. So those are the feet firmly on the mat. And if you need that front leg a little bit bent, it's fine with me. I'm not telling you yes or no. <laughs> Your body tells you yes or no. All right, now I really enjoy that block on the seat. So I'm gonna reach forward, my hand on the block, and that top shoulder, encourage it a little bit more open to the sky. I'm trying not to look up though, because it does create a lot of strain on the neck. Unnecessary strain. Pushing into the chair seat or the block. Nice straight arm. And then bend the knee, coming back, and just shake it out. Shake everything, right? <laughs> shake it, shake it, shake it. All right, we're going to do dancer pose two ways. So I'm using the back of the chair to hold on to. You're going to need a block if you have it. If you don't have a block, don't worry about it. And a strap. Again, I'm kind of... Take it in half here. If you want to make that loop in the strap for around the foot, you can. Um, not really necessary. So active dancer means that we're engaging the quad. Um, passive dancer, we're going to do a stretch. So dancer pose you could face your chair back. I'm holding on. Taking my block into my hand and I'm pressing the block into the heel and the heel back into the block. Ouch, right? I know. So actually this engages the hamstring, I should say. Um, we are technically stretching the quad here, but it's a little bit more relaxed doing the passive, <laughs> the passive way you'll see. So I'm pressing, 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 eek. And then release. Let's just take this on the other side right away so we get it over with. I actually like dancer pose a lot. All right, so release out of that. So just test for a moment. Just play around with me. If you can hold on to the foot, then this is your stretch. So my arm is straight. My hand is around the top of my foot, top of my ankle, and then I'm taking my thigh back. So it's a little bit of a back bend here. Taking the thigh back as far as possible, or I'm gonna take that strap and put it around the foot, and we're gonna take it back. It's not as not as easy for me to do it with the strap, I'm just being honest. So I'm going to let that go. Um, try a little loop around the foot and then hold the end of the strap, that sometimes works. So I'll show you that on the other side. So you can release for a moment or continue to hold, that's fine. So we're creating a little loop. I just wanna show you this, you have it. So teeny tiny little loop, just enough to hold the foot. And then you're going to use this to bring it up. All right. So as long as you feel like you did enough on that side, take your time here. You take it on the other side. And then take that thigh back as far as you can, and you are going into a slight back bend. So you'll see this when we go into our half camel. And 
we'll release that and shake it out. All right, good news. We have half camel next. <laughs> I know you're excited. All right, so I'm gonna show you half camel two different ways. Um, one way is going to be seated on the chair, so I'm just scooching my chair back. Um, if you're doing kneeling, you're going to be kneeling in front of the seat. So I'll give you plenty of time because I know you're probably gonna wanna watch the setup of this before doing it. And obviously get the knee support there. Um, if you have a block, grab a block. So I'll show you the seated version first. I'm gonna sit on the very edge of my seat. I'm just have my feet on this. Your feet could be on the floor um, just because it's there. So half camel is literally going to look like cow pose with one arm up. So I'm gonna reach for anything, the side of my chair, as far back on my chair. Um, if my hand doesn't wanna grab, I can just take my forearm and press it into the, like the back. Imagine this was like a solid back of the chair. So my forearm is pressing on the, the back of the chair on the side, I hope that makes sense. So it's a back bend, so then I'm adding this little up, little slight twist to it. So we've, we prep for this, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not just slinging you into this. And then you would do the other side. I'm just gonna show you. I don't know if you wanna grab. So it's like tilting your pelvis forward, going into a cow pose. Then you have your other hand going up. So it's this little twist as well. If that's too much, then just focus on a cow pose. So tilting the pelvis forward, opening up the chest. And this technically would be full camel then. You just grab onto something and just hold here. So your chin could be down if that feels better or you could let it slightly go up. Um, don't loosely drop the head back, obviously. Whew, but it's very, <laughs> Took my breath away a little bit. It's a little invigorating of a pose. Um, breathe evenly through the nose, in and out. Take breaks when you need to. That's the chair version. If you want to do the kneeling version, we're going to kneel in front of the chair. We're going to use the chair for our hands. The block is optional. I like the block between the thighs. I feel like that reminds me to gauge the thighs in towards each other and you're going to keep your pelvis over your knees just like you're standing so my toes can be tucked under or untucked i kind of like how it feels tucked and i can kind of tap the front of my chair so i'm going to start by just pushing my hips slightly forward i'm going to reach one hand back to my chair seat the other hand's going to reach up so not a big back bend here, spinal extension. Um, unless your vertebrae are just shaped in a unique way, you're not gonna go back very far. So think of pushing hips forward, squeezing the block if you have it, and then reaching up, coming back. Remember, take your time here, catch your breath. And then you could do the other side when you're ready. So hold on to chair, push hips forward, getting to that slight back bend, slight little twist, reaching arm overhead. And then release. Take a longer break. Now, if you have um, anything sharp, that's pain, um, don't do this. Obviously, right? <laughs> Sharp pain back out of anything. If you wanna try full camel with the chair, I'm gonna hold my hands. This feels a little narrow for me, but I'm gonna try to hold my hands onto the edge of the seat, push hips forward, squeeze block. And then really you're pressing your sternum, your chest forward. Shoulder blades are squeezing together. So everything that we've been practicing even engaging the glutes slightly as your pelvis goes forward. And then slowly, slowly, slowly come out of it. 
All right, so sit on the chair, wherever the chair is. You don't have to adjust it or anything. Just sit. I like to have one hand on the heart, one hand on my thigh. And just close your eyes here and catch your breath. That could be pretty intense. You don't have to move. You can release your hands down your lap and pause. Um, I'm going to move just so I can face you. I'm just going to simply close out class with some breath focus work. So sit where you feel comfortable. You could always scooch back and lean your back in the chair seat, uh, the seat back, I mean. Open or close your eyes. If you like to return to the chin mudra, it is um, thumb to index finger on both hands, palms up or down. And as you breathe, focus on the heart center. So we're an energetic focus. Imagine a ball of light at that heart center. And as you inhale, the ball of light expands. And as you exhale, the ball of light contracts. But as it contracts, it gets a little brighter. So with each breath, you're fueling this heart light energy. Inhale, it expands. Exhale, it comes back and gets a little brighter. Now, whether you see the brightness in your mind's eye or not, it doesn't matter. Just imagine instead if the brightness isn't working, that it just gets stronger. At the exhale, the breath cycle fully completing brings you vitality love, life force energy, or prana. And just be here now.
deep in the breath. Let the image of this light sphere go, but still retain its energy, its life force in your body. You can release the mudra. And slowly open your eyes. Take care of yourself. Namaste.